Hi, and welcome to another video on PolyML. In this video, we'll be looking at functions and some basic polymorphism. Okay, so let's create a function. The simplest way to make a function is using the fn command. And for the first function, we'll just use a simple identity function, which would be, it takes an argument, and then it just simply outputs the same argument. What we've created here is a function of type alpha arrow alpha. Alpha being a polymorphic term for any argument. It could be an integer, a real, a character, a string, a boolean. It can be any argument at all. Notice how I say the function has the type alpha arrow alpha. That is because functions, just like standard variables of integer and real, are also types in ML and can be applied to functions themselves, although that is higher order functions and will come later. So let's create something more interesting. Let's take the standard function x goes into, and instead of having just the identity function, we'll add in another variable as well. And then we'll add both these variables together. And the type of that function is int arrow int arrow int. What this is basically saying is that I have a function that takes in an integer and puts that integer into a different function that has the type int arrow int. So it's an integer going into a function that has type int arrow int. This is also a function that can allow for partial application. Partial application is where you can apply some computation to a function to get back a function that is partially completed. So if we applied a five into that, we would get back a function that was five plus y, because it's still waiting on the other half of the information. However, going into partial application will require another video. So let's move on. Okay, so we know how to create a function using the fn command, but how do you save it? To, to save a function using the fn command, you'd use val, then you would name your function temp, and you would create your function after the equal sign. So if we just go back to the standard x goes into x, we now have a function called temp that is of type alpha arrow alpha. There is also a different method to creating named functions, and that is using the fun command. So if we were to create that again using the fun, it would be fun temp. But now you put your arguments here, which would be x, and that would be x equals x. And that is exactly the same as doing fn x goes to x. So we can recreate the second function we created in the fun variation. So if we did fun, we'll call it temp2 this time, then x. But instead of doing x goes into y goes into x plus y, we can simply just do x y equals x plus y. And that is exactly the same as the previous function that had int arrow int arrow int but just written in a different way when you've created it. Okay, so now we understand basic functions and how to create them. Let's spice things up a bit. But first we'll clear the screen. Do clear. Now we'll get back straight into poly. Okay, so as I mentioned, functions can be placed inside other functions as long as the types match. So let's start off with creating a simple function to increment a number. So to do this, we'll do phone inc for increment x equals x plus one what that'll do is if we do inc one it will just add one to it so inc two will go to three so now let's create a second function that we can put this into for this one to show some understanding of how ml works we'll use a double so we'll do fun double we'll accept a y argument and then we'll apply the y argument to inc and then we'll times it by two. So it's doubling the, the result of the ink y. To better understand this, let's try it. So if I do double two, it comes up with six. So what this is doing is it's doing ink two, which comes up with three, and then it's doing three times two, which goes to six. So what ML is doing in the background here is it's evaluating ink y first, and then it's timesing it by two. If we wanted it the other way around, however, we need to recreate the, ver the function again. We'll do inc and then y times two. So now what that will do 
is it'll calculate the y times 2 first instead of calculating the inc y first and then times it by, times it by 2. So now if we do double 2, it comes up as 5. Because it is 2 times 2, which is 4, incremented by 1 to 5. So these functions don't seem very difficult at the minute. But understanding that you can use functions inside of other functions is a very complex thing to do in ML and it'll help you further on.